Hey everybody, it's Josh again. Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, I talk a lot about cybersecurity and IT stuff and kind of career and education stuff in general. Uh, this particular video is going to cover Discrete Mathematics 2, which is part of the Western Governors University Computer Science degree. I'm kind of doing a, a mini series on like stuff regarding the CS degree at WGU. I'm going to cover like some of the classes and, and some other things. And this video is just kind of another one of those. Um, so if you're thinking about doing WGU Computer Science or if you're like already in the program and you're having to deal with discrete mathematics too this video will be like pretty useful for you so basically the things i'm going to cover in this video is the best way to approach the class and how to study for it the method of the study i'm going to cover the calculator which calculator i got and kind of how to prepare your calculator to better increase your chances of passing the exam because there's definitely some things you can do like to help you out as, as far as your calculator goes. Again, if you're in CompSci program and you're thinking about going into it, uh, yeah, go ahead and watch this video. It will be definitely useful for you. And also I wanna say out of, so I have three degrees from WGU. I have like the IT degree, the master's in cybersecurity, and then I have the CompSci degree. Out of all of those degrees and like all the classes I took, this one was definitely the hardest class. So it's definitely passable, but I'm just saying it's probably like the, for me, it was the most difficult class I did like inside of WGU. And just to give you kind of an idea of how long the course might take, uh, I consider myself really, really average at mathematics. I'm really good at sitting for a long time and I, I tend, I have a lot of discipline, but as far as my skill and like how fast I grasp concepts, it's really average or maybe even below average. But like I, I pregame studied this like a little bit but once I was in WG from like the time I like opened the class up to the time I finished it, it was probably like three weeks but of Again, I, I studied like even before I, I entered WGU. So your your mileage may vary, but hopefully with these techniques, you'll be able to you know understand things and finish faster than you would have otherwise. So getting into the strategy, the way Discrete Math 2 works at WGU, basically they give you, um, you have access to Zybooks. I think that's how you say it, but it's essentially like an online book with like you read it, but it has like a lot of like interactive components with it too. There's little animations and stuff to show you like how modulus works and like all these other components components of discrete math too. So you have this book that you go through and then you do like the practice problems in the book and stuff. So like what I would recommend is before you even like deal with that book. So to pass the class, you have to take and pass an objective assessment or it's just an exam essentially, a multiple choice exam. So before even getting into the book, what I would recommend is is taking the the pre-assessment once, like you're, you'll are you fail it for sure, um, unless you cheat on it, which it doesn't really matter if you, you cheat because it's like not proctored and it doesn't matter. But I would take the pre-assessment like immediately just once and don't worry about passing it because you won't probably not maybe you will but just take it and then read all of, of the the questions and just do your best to like answer but don't spend like too long on it because the point is like not to pass it the point is when you take the pre-assessment you kind of read all the questions and kind of get a good idea of the type of things that will be on the actual exam and then it gives you like a better idea of like where you need to focus your studies and like what kind of things you know as you're actually going through the book you can kind of recognize those things in the book since you've seen them before and it gives you like a little better point of reference and it, will, it may help you like remember things a, a little bit better um, so I would, I would recommend doing that after you take the pre-assessment you still have access to it afterwards along with a scoring report and you can see all the questions and stuff afterwards and like obviously the the final has similar questions like the type of questions are the same but obviously they're going to be different but again just take the pre-assessment fail it who cares but you can you use that to kind of prime your brain or like let your brain kind of preview the things you're going to be learning in the book so you can really better laser focus your attention when you're actually going through the book. And the next step you want to do after you take the pre-assessment and you've kind of looked at all the problems, go ahead and get started on the, the actual curriculum or the actual book that they provide you. Don't spend like too long every day going through it. Maybe just like a couple hours so you don't get burned out, but just go through the book and just make sure to do all the practice problems in the book. Like when you're studying math, like you get to this point where you're like, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm just getting like really tired. Like when you feel that, like at the, you know, even if it's like one hour or two hours, just like stop and take a break. Like even maybe for the rest of the day. At this point, you just want to, you know, take your time and go through the Zybooks material um, at your own pace. Don't burn yourself out. It's easy to get like really tired doing this, but just go through the material. And then once you've like hit the end of the book, like don't really like worry about anything too much. But at this point, go ahead and take the pre assessment one more time. And then this time when you take the pre assessment, you'll be able to like answer more of the 
of the questions you come across, like a lot more of them will make sense, but you, you'll still get like a bunch of them wrong. Like maybe the recursion, for example, is like really hard to wrap your brain around. Um, even if you understand recursion, like the problems they give you are kind of troublesome. So pick all the problems that you got wrong in the second pre-assessment and write those out on like a you know notepad or something like this. And then for every five you got wrong, uh, schedule a session with the course instructor. For every five, schedule one 45 minute session. So if you got like, you know, 15 answers wrong, schedule three sessions with the course instructor for 45 minutes, 45 minutes, 45 minutes, maybe like one per day or something like this. And then just ask the course instructor, like, can you, can you walk through these problems and kind of speak out loud so I can like hear your thought process. And they'll, they'll give you um, some nice like little tips and tricks and they'll explain things to you to kind of help you understand how to solve that particular problem and because the problems on the objective assessment are so similar to what you'll see on the the pre-assessment in terms of you know for example they're not the numbers are not going to be the same but you'll you might have like a um, like a Bayes theorem question or something like this where you'll have like one and then you'll have like another kind of similar Bayes theorem question on the final for sure you'll have like a few like relatively similar recursion problems on the objective assessment and kind of the idea the idea at this phase is to get the course mentor to like walk through like the steps to solve those problems uh, so you kind of have a firm understanding and you can kind of grasp how to solve them once you get to the actual uh, objective assessment oh also at the end of each session the ci or the course instructor will they'll send you this kind of pdf at the end where you can kind of see all their notes and like everything they wrote uh, so it's really it's really useful they'll also sometimes give like little tips and stuff and like write it down and next i kind of want to cover what you should do with your calculator because I don't think I didn't see it anywhere, but they don't really talk about, you know, tips and tricks with the calculator very much. They just kind of tell you like what calculator you're allowed to use. And they're like, there you go. And then you kind of have to either like use your calculator as is or uh, be like a weasel and figure out, you know, stuff to put on it that will like help you, I guess. For discrete math too, I ended up getting like the TI 84 plus silver edition. This probably won't focus. Yeah. TI-80 plus silver. And then I also like upgraded the, the OS or the firmware on it, I guess, because the way my calculator was, I couldn't use the summation function. And I also couldn't use like modulus because this doesn't have like modulus built in and like module modulus, is, like all over discrete mathematics. Like if you wanted to use like Euclidean algorithm or like RSA or just doing mod for whatever reason in general, it's really good to have it on here. So um, I would recommend um, you can just go to like whatever TI's website is and just update the OS from there. I'll, I'll try to put like links in the description, but your calculator might be, the version might be slightly different, but make sure to up, update the OS to the latest one so you can use like summation at least. And then also get a program called OmniCalc and then install OmniCalc here. And I'll also put a link to that as well. Um, OmniCalc is the thing that lets you do mod and then updating the OS is the lets you do like a Riemann sum. For sure, like I, I wouldn't have passed in three weeks if, if I didn't have those like two features because I really like abused them. I don't know if abuse is the right word, but I, I used them quite a bit on the on the final. So just to summarize, when you register for the class or you're gear ready to take it, just take the pre-assessment immediately. Don't worry about failing it. Just expect to fail it. Read every question in the pre-assessment. Do your best to kind of understand what it is just to kind of get a preview for the class and what you'll be learning. After you take the pre-assessment, just go through the whole Zybooks material. Do every single problem in there that you can. And after you finish that, take the pre-assessment one more time. This time, you know, try hard on it. You'll get more correct. Um, but for the ones you get wrong, just write those ones down. And for every five you get wrong, schedule a 45 minute block with the course instructor and make sure you understand all of those things. Get your calculator squared away, the TI-84 plus silver or something. That's the one that I had. I'll put a link in the description. Make sure to install OmniCalc so you have the modular function, modulus function, and then make sure to update the OS on it so you have the re ability to to do Riemann sum as well. So once you have all that squared away, meet with the CI, get your calculator done, just go ahead and uh, you know take the exam and just do your best. Oh, also, I used code with Mosh to kind of learn time complexity for this class. Like I already purchased the data structures and algorithms course that he has for the actual data structures and algorithms at WGU, but just like the time complexity section of that, like really, really came in handy for this curriculum. So uh, it costs money, but if you feel like um, using it, I, I use it and it was really helpful to me. Um, I'll put a link in the description for that as well. But that's pretty much all I had. If you enjoyed this content, please feel free to like and subscribe uh, and ring the bell and all of that. And also I respect to like everyone's comments like all the time so if you have like, questions or criticism or anything feel free to leave a comment i'll, I'll definitely respond to it uh, but yeah thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one bye bye